Why is it hard to get rid of things? First off, I want to talk about the emotional side of it and why emotions make it difficult to let things go. Then I'm going to talk about the physical side of it, the lack of time, the lack of motivation, the wanting to be frugal because, well, we don't want to waste money and if we can use things, we should keep them, you know, just in case. A while ago, I was having coffee with a friend and she mentioned that she is entering a new season of life. She is a mom of 13 and half of her kids have now moved out of the house and so she needed to let things go. As we talked, she shared about all the different feelings that came up as she was sorting and making decisions about things. The actual decluttering part wasn't hard. It wasn't hard for her to get rid of the things, but she found herself crying through all of it and just recognizing that she was now moving out of a season of life. When we declutter, we have to face our feelings and the emotions, the different feelings that can come up when we decide to get rid of something can be any, anything, any range of emotions. It may be the subtle shame of having spent money on something and not, not actually using it. Or maybe because someone gave us something and we just, just don't treasure it like we think we should. The emotions might be heavy, processing the loss of someone, mourning, grieving, or even the, the loss of, of dreams and things that we had hoped that we would have in life, but we're not going to. Because of that, it's honestly easier to keep things stored away than to feel the emotions that we have to feel if we decide to let them go. Well, how do we move past it then? Some of us, sometimes, we can push through and we can just bulldoze through, make decisions and be like, I'm gonna get rid of as much as possible from this area and it'll be better. And we can get rid of quite a lot this way even when emotions come up. Doesn't mean that it's the healthiest way, but it's possible. Or we can be our own therapist and talk ourselves through it we can say things like, yeah, I spent money on this. It served its purpose in my life and now I can let it go and I will be okay. And it can go and bless someone else. It also helps to acknowledge things, to acknowledge the feelings that we're going through. We can acknowledge that we have these feelings and there's nothing wrong because feelings aren't right or wrong. They're just feelings. And if we're really struggling, we have anxiety or any other kind of really strong feelings, we can know that in a minute or two, they're going to pass and we're going to be okay. We can allow ourselves to acknowledge that someone has passed and we miss them. And there's, there's something missing from our lives. We can miss what could have been and we can allow ourselves to cry and feel sad we can acknowledge that certain hopes and dreams did not come about and yes we're disappointed but we can determine to live our lives anyway regardless of that getting rid of clutter is also getting rid of heavy emotions because you have to deal, like process the emotions when you make a decision to let things go, you're moving on, you're moving forward in a healthier place. This is why so many people say minimalism brings freedom. Yes, it's hard to face all those feelings, to feel everything, to acknowledge them, to work through them, but it also means that you're able to come to terms with the situation and move forward. Many people feel as if the heavy emotions are tied to specific items, uh, especially the negative emotions that come up when we, when we face these things. And so then they feel like as they remove those items from their house, they're removing all those really difficult, unpleasant emotions from their home as well. And then then you can turn around and you can look at your home and you just feel as if this weight has been lifted. Well, what if the problem is not an emotional one, but a physical one, where maybe it's 
time constraints, energy constraints. First off, let's talk about time and motivation because there's so many things that are so much more fun than dealing with stuff in our homes. We tend to think of, of decluttering as kind of a drag and it takes way more time than we actually want to spend doing it. So, so what's a person to do? Well, first off, set aside time to get it done. If we want something to happen, we have to plan it. Otherwise, it just it's not a priority to us and it just doesn't happen. Does that take sacrifice to some extent? Yes, but you gain so much time freedom back when you are done decluttering and simplifying. Well, what about motivation? Because sure, we can set aside time to get it done, but if we're not motivated to work on it, that's really, really challenging. It's tempting to wait for motivation to come to us as if on a gentle breeze, like, like we're an artist sitting in a field of flowers and just waiting to be visited by our muse. And I hate to break it to you, but that's not the way it happens. Even with creativity, it's the people that work consistently that are rewarded with lots of ideas and they're able to create so many things and accomplish so many things. To get motivated, you have to take action first. Motivation follows action. And it doesn't take much. Just some simple steps of, you know, one decision at a time. And when we start with those simple things, we start with the simple steps, we'll see the progress and it feels good and we want to accomplish more. So then there's the just in case stuff. And just in case stuff is really, a, we keep it based on fear. It could be fear of, well, I won't have it if when I actually need it, or it could be based on the, the fear of scarcity that will be lacking in some way. And for myself as a Christian, I don't want to make decisions based on fear. And so when I'm struggling to get rid of something, I will ask myself, well, am I afraid of living without this? Or is it, is it really likely that I'm going to be making use of it anytime soon? Because we have a big family, it did make sense to keep some things. We were able to keep things like soap that we're going to work our way through and use up eventually. But the things like extra screwdrivers, I am not likely to break five to ten other screwdrivers to make it necessary to need extras beyond what I have. And yes, I had I had way more than five to ten extras. I ha I had. I don't know, 20, 30. Or the extra crock pot. Well, for one, I didn't even like crock pot meals at all. I haven't for my entire life. To me, the crock pot takes all the texture out of the foods and I want the texture. So what was the point in me having one crock pot, let alone two, because I had an extra. The only reason I'd be keeping those crock pots would be because of fear. Fear of what? I'm not sure because I didn't want to actually eat anything out of them. It wasn't going to affect me greatly. It wasn't going to affect me at all to let them go. And I can't think of a worst case scenario in when, which I would need a crock pot. I had to acknowledge when I was either afraid of, of something like not having the money to replace something, that not being prepared in case of a catastrophe, and then let go of the item regardless of my fear. Because like for the crock pot example, if a catastrophe happens, why would I need a crock pot? If we're out of electricity in our house, the crock pot's not going to help me. If the house floods, if the house burns down, if I don't know, whatever, like if the worst possible thing happens to my home, to my life, I'm not going to care about the crock pot. So we can feel that fear and we can make the decision to let things go anyway. Feel the fear, do it anyway. 
and we can know that we will be okay. If you find for yourself that it's difficult to let things go because of the sentimental value they are to you, but you know you need to reduce the amount of possessions that you have, you can watch that video right here where I walk through the process of letting go of sentimental items.